You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to the first episode of Media Opinions. This is a series where I talk about different types of media and give my opinions on certain subjects about them. I do apologize, I am just getting better from being sick, which is why there hasn't been a video in a few days up until now, and my voice is just barely coming off that. So I may sound a little bit off, but hopefully by the time I upload the next video I should sound completely normal. Regardless, today we're going to be talking about localization. If you're unfamiliar with the term localization, it's when a form of media, be it a movie, a TV show, whatever it is, gets taken to a different country, it has changes done to it. Now sometimes those changes are, are as simple as translating it from its native language into the language of the country it's going to. Other times it involves censorship, and other times it involves completely changing the work to be something completely different from what it originally was. I'm going to talk about what I consider to be the good and bad kinds of localization, because I think there are both. I'm going to be using Japanese media as examples, because those are typically the easiest, although this does hold true to other forms of media as well. Let's start off with a shitty example. Censorship. Dead Man Wonderland is brutally censored. To the point that I can't even find the uncensored version online anywhere, not with a Japanese import, nowhere. Which, to be fair, I don't know that the Japanese version is uncensored, but I know that it is at least less censored, or that at least an uncensored version exists, because I've seen an uncensored version of the intro. Dead Man Wonderland is one of the most censored animes I've ever seen. Ironically, the dub is uncensored on the US release, but the original Japanese language dub is not. I think that's a bad thing to happen. I'll give another shitty example. Elf Park The Stick of Truth, when it was released in Europe and Australia, got kinda butchered when it came to specific levels. They cut it out and just replaced it with a title card telling you what happened. And while I do think the title card was kinda funny with the way they described it, it's bullshit that, that European players and Australian players couldn't get the full experience on console. And in the US we didn't have to worry about that, but still, it's a shitty thing to do. There are countless other examples of censorship, but I think you get the idea. Now let's talk about something good. Turning something into something completely different. This can usually go one of two ways. It'll turn out to be utter shit, or it'll turn out to be fucking amazing. And what I mean by that is, I'll use MXC, for example. MXC, if you don't know, is the American release of the TV series Takeshi's Castle. Takeshi's Castle is an obstacle course TV series where contestants compete in different various obstacle courses. That's pretty much all it is in the original Japanese. They do have this, this overarching set of cutaways with Count Takeshi and his little sidekick. But overall, there's not much else to the show. It's still entertaining as all hell, don't get me wrong. The obstacle courses are crazy, the weird outfits they wear, you know, things like that. But when they brought it over to the US, they made what is, in my opinion, one of the best shows ever on TV, MXC. With MXC, they completely redubbed the show, rearranged the segments, and basically made new episodes out of existing footage. And when they did that, they also completely rewrote all the dialogue, making it much, much more comedic. Instead of Takeshi and his assistant, they call themselves Vic Romano and Kenny Blankenship. And while it's still fun to go back and watch the original Takeshi's Castle, I find MXC so much more entertaining. They also did similar things with Shin-Chan and Ghost Stories, two different animes that, although Shin-Chan was still pretty comedic with the Japanese dub, was much more comedic and dirty with the American dub. And with Ghost Stories, they turned it from a horror into a comedy. There are other examples of things changing into other things, such as the Godzilla films. The first three Godzilla movies when they came out in the US were recut with American footage. I have only seen the American version of King Kong vs. Godzilla. I have not seen the American version of the first Godzilla or the second Godzilla yet. But to be fair, I haven't watched those two at all yet. I'm still working on it. I do have quite a lot of Godzilla movies in my collection that I need to get around to watching. Or with Gamera, they did the same thing with the very first Gamera movie. So yeah, you get the idea with that. But localization is something that we're seeing increasingly less and less. Most of the times we'll get subtitles, which is what I prefer anyway when watching anime, uh, most of the time anyway, as well as uh, foreign films. But there are some instances where I prefer the dub, such as Dragon Ball. I refuse to watch Dragon Ball in Japanese because I hate Goku's voice. I also prefer the Bruce Falconer soundtrack, but that's a different topic for a different day. So when you get to localization, you know, things are changing. We don't get a lot of this crazy shit like we used to, and it's kind of sad. I miss the crazy over-the-top changes like MXC, Shin-Chan, and Godzilla. Things like, uh... Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon got butchered with their 4Kids releases. 4Kids destroys things when they localize them. So localizing can be kind of a double-edged sword. 
But I do like localization when it's done right, and I think it can make something that much more entertaining. It's still nice to have the original, and if you can include both on a DVD release, that's great. I know that uh, Shin-chan and Ghost Stories both contain the Japanese dub for the episodes included, and I do also know that... Uh, I believe each season of MXC contains at least one episode of Takeshi's Castle. I only own season one, so I can only speak for that, but still. And of course, with localization, you sometimes get anomalies, like the Speedy dub, which I've talked about at length before. But I'll go more into dubs versus subs at some other point, with another episode of Media Opinions. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you guys like localization? Do you hate it? Do you like it and hate it kind of like I do? What's your favorite different version of something? Do you prefer to watch things in their original form or in their localized form? Let me know in the comments below and you have a great day. Subscribe to Fiji to Red Eye.